Jordan and the Bulls. You just won your first NBA championship. What are you going to do next? We're going to Disney World. Yeah. Although nearly 30 years later on from that clip, it now seems as if the entire NBA is going to be going to Walt Disney World. But let's discuss how and why. Up next. Hi there Waltoners, I'm Jack and this is DS My Newscast and first of all I just want to start off by saying that obviously I'm no expert on the NBA. However, I do want to address this topic through the lens of what this means for Disney, as it's going to be fairly important. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. As the NBA was the first major US sports league to suspend its operations on March 12th, as the NBA commissioner Adam Silver later confirmed that 10 players had tested positive for COVID-19, and so the decision was made to put the 2019-2020 to season on hiatus. However, throughout that time period, concepts for a possible resumption were being explored where the rest of the season will be played at one or two designated locations, with the two frontrunners being being Las Vegas and Walt Disney World. Now this idea was titled by some as a bubble site proposal, where the locations being considered would need to have ample nearby accommodation, a strong closed circuit transportation system, and plenty of practice facilities and suitable venues for televised games. However, last week it was confirmed by NBA spokesperson Mike Bass that ongoing discussions were being held between the NBA and the Walt Disney Company about using the Walt Disney World Resort to host the bubble site scenario and instead going straight to the playoffs and not resuming the remainder of the season, as this would streamline the amount of teams needed to make the trip to Orlando from 30 to 16 teams. However, with that, there is the issue of broadcast obligations for certain teams to play a number of games, so we'll have to wait and see how many teams make the trip. But despite all of that, it's still positive that the NBA have issued a statement confirming these discussions, and have also posted on their NBA site that it's official that they're talks with Disney with hopes to resume the season in late July, although it will still need to have approval by all of the team owners, broadcast partners and National Basketball Players Association within the next two weeks. So now that we've addressed that the NBA's move to Walt Disney World is pretty much imminent, let's now discuss what this will mean for the logistics behind it and also what the effects of this might be on Walt Disney World's reopening. As first of all, it should be clarified that when the sports media say Walt Disney World, what they really mean is the ESPN Wide World of Sports complex that is a 255 acre campus located on Walt Disney World property, just south of Disney's Hollywood Studios. And this complex usually plays host year round to numerous athletic, cheerleading, soccer, baseball and basketball competitions, including the Junior NBA World Championship as well. And so it makes complete sense that the NBA would be interested in this location, as the complex has the Visa Center, which can be split up into three courts, the HP Fieldhouse, that can be split up into two, and then the Arena, which has the flexibility of being split up into two full-size courts or four auxiliary courts. So what all of this means is that the complex will be able to provide sufficient training facilities, practice areas, and broadcast-ready courts with it most likely being that the HP Fieldhouse will be used as the broadcast venue for these NBA games. But this entire setup is actually mutually beneficial to both Disney and the NBA, as the NBA gets the controlled bubble scenario which reduces the overall risk to the players of contracting COVID-19 and causing a secondary suspension of the season which would then delay the 2020 into 2021 season. But it's also a very smart business move by Disney as it guarantees a percentage of hotel occupancy at Walt Disney World, meaning that at least some of the vacant property will be generating income whether the parks are open or not. But to dive down a little bit deeper into that hotel occupancy, if we're to say that only the 16 teams are to be hosted on Walt Disney World property, then the NBA will likely need around 600 to 700 hotel rooms, which when you take into consideration that Disney World has 30,000 hotel rooms, it shouldn't be a problem. But logistically, we 
whichever hotel resort hosts the NBA teams, it will need to remain closed to guests throughout that period to ensure that controlled bubble idea safeguarding the health of the players and it will also need to be in close proximity to the complex. But whichever hotel is chosen, the main objective will be not just to have the capacity, but also the ability to close off that resort from the rest of the public and have increased security to ensure the privacy for the NBA. But most importantly, from a Disney fan's perspective, it also offers Disney incredible free marketing exposure during every game, as it will surely be mentioned that the games are coming to you live from Walt Disney World which is an extremely valuable branding opportunity that keeps the resort in the forefront of people's minds at the beginning of this economic recovery and also raises more brand awareness ahead of the resort's 50th anniversary in 2021. Although this extra media exposure could also be seen as sort of a double-edged sword for Disney. As with the NBA discussions and also interest from Major League Soccer to potentially use the wide world of sports complex, all of this is most likely playing a big factor in Disney's extremely careful and highly cautious approach to their phased reopening plan for Walt Disney World. As with the NBA's training to potentially begin to take place toward the middle of June at the ESPN complex and a tentative resumption date for the league being late July, then Disney will need to take every measure to ensure that the extra media exposure remains positive, as they will have more attention on Walt Disney World on a daily basis than they usually do, which may mean that the resort will open up at a slower rate than that of Universal Studios, which is reopening on June 5th as a secondary wave of coronavirus cases being linked back to Disney or Universal would inevitably damage the attendance of the overall theme park industry for many years to come. But rest assured, Disney is going to be announcing their reopening plan tomorrow on Wednesday the 27th of May, so stay tuned to DSMI Newscast for all of that. But now, it's over to you for Walt and as I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions about the NBA coming to Walt Disney World for this season at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, and also, how do you think that this will all play into the Disney reopening strategy around Walt Disney World with extra precautions and also the extra media attention? And also, don't forget to put the timestamp for where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere in today's video, along with your suggestion or your comment, to be in with a chance to win one of these official DSY newscasts and pins. And congratulations to this Walton here, here for this suggestion from a previous video where we were talking all about Disney Springs reopening. And so that's it for today, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel, turn on the notification bell so that you always receive an update, and also if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.